Today is the 7th of February, 2021. So we come together and we can contemplate um, this world, this world that all the beings here live on, and its place in the solar system that has the sun in the center, and then uh, the earth is one of the planets which orbit it. And so the earth constantly spins around the sun, and it uh, comes and then it returns. Uh, But time never returns back to us. It always is moving forward. And if we don't have mindfulness, if we don't have wisdom, then we just stay in the same place. So for those people who are in this world and are just working their jobs, living their lives in that way, um, it's like they're just marching in place. They don't develop at all. They wake up in the morning and then go off to their work, um, fulfill their duties, their finding money, eating food, and then going to sleep. I do this every single day. It's like they're just marching in the same place. Um, They don't move forward. And um, even though there are paths, but we have to walk along these paths in order to get somewhere. So they have many paths in the world, um, but these just lead us through the world. There's also the path of Dhamma, however. So in order to travel in the world, um, there are many different ways that we can do that. There are roads that are there for cars. There are even um, certain pathways through the air for aeroplanes. Um, And there are many different means of transport these days, and things are more developed than they were before. So traveling now is far more convenient than it was, say, 50 years ago. But if we don't contemplate, then we stay lost in this world. And sometimes, however, we hear about a path that we can follow. And this path is that of training our minds, a path that takes us to inner peace. We hear about monasteries and external monasteries, but perhaps we don't like them. There are, there are many different kinds of temples. There are city temples, there are forest temples, but we don't really know what goes on there. And there are also practice monasteries. We may get the impression that these are quiet places, peaceful places, where people go to to train themselves. But we don't have any interest in that. So we just stay stuck in place in that way. And sometimes people do move, they do walk, but they're actually walking backwards. And this is for the people who are attached. They get addicted to gambling, addicted to going out at night, to uh, drinking, to taking drugs. Um, But really, having been born in this world, we should study to develop our minds, to make them better. But when people live their lives in this way, Um, They get born into this world and they just become more and more deluded. For those who have intelligence, however, having been born, they train their minds, develop their minds, so they raise up and get better. For those who don't have wisdom, they just get more and more deluded. And so when there's this disillusion there, we want, maybe they want to progress, but they're just not able to do that. So they just go back and forth, back and forth, and they never get anywhere, just stuck in the same place. Just like people who are lost in a forest, and they can't find their way out. And those who have lost their way, they can't find the path to take them to where they want to go. They can't find a way out. So for those beings who are lost in this world, what that means is that they're lost in the Aramanas in the objects of the senses. And that's what this world is, essentially. The world is sights, is sounds, is odors, is uh, tactile sensations, is thoughts. And that is the world. 
So being lost in the world means being lost in these sense impressions. And for any sense impression that comes that inspires us or attracts us to being deluded in them or to uh, getting entertained or um, caught up in them, then the mind will just do that. Any sense impression that inspires greed, then the heart becomes greedy. If it inspires hate, then the heart becomes hateful. and just follows these impressions always. So to be deluded in this world means to be deluded in these sense impressions. And this is what Lumpur Cha taught. He taught it very clearly. So we should contemplate this world, seeing that it orbits around. And it has the cycle, but it comes back around again. But time never comes back to us. And we should think about that. We should think, well, what should we do then? We may just stay stuck here in this world until our lives finish. We're not able to find our way out. But now that we, for us here, we have found a path, we have found the right way, we should really hurry up to walk that path. We need to be intent uh, to listen to the Dhamma. Uh, because we don't know how much time that we have left. Uh, that uh, our time is running out. Because um, maybe we've already gained a lot from this world. We already have many things uh, that we've become lost in, many things that we've become amused by. Uh, but for people who are like this, um, their hearts often don't want the Dhamma. Maybe they are afraid of listening to the Dhamma because they think that if they do, um, then what they'll be told is to not uh, find amusement on, of the things in this world. And so their kilesas, they pull them away from the Dhamma. And this greed, hatred, and illusion in their heart is um, pulling them away. We can call these the, the demons of defilements there in the heart. Or that the mind is proliferating um, based or through Mara. But those who have intelligence, however, they will be able to see this path, this path of Dhamma, and walk it. And this is the path that really takes us forward. It's the path that takes us to heaven. So for all of us, we really do want to progress. And when we are studying as children, then we feel like we need to progress through the various um, levels. When we go to work, we want to progress in our work as well. But for those with intelligence, they'll wish to progress internally in their hearts. Because we've already found a lot of other things already. But what we need to do now is try to find our hearts. Try to find a heart that's good. A heart that's beautiful. A heart that's peaceful and cool. A, part, a heart that's imbued with the Dhamma. And if we walk this, um, where does it lead to? Where will it end? Well, it does actually have an ending to it. And if we go forward, then we'll meet with that. This path of the worlds, it has an ending as well, and that ending is death. The path of Dhamma, however, it ends in seeing the Dhamma, in knowing and attaining to the Dhamma. And so we need to train our minds to be focused on this, to put our efforts into it, and to have a goal. Just like when we study, we need to have a goal as well. In these days, um, people set up their goals very quickly, very young. Uh, that even quite young, they already think about what they're going to be studying in higher education, where they want to study to become a doctor, a teacher, a um, lawyer, an engineer. So things are a lot faster than they were. Uh, but when they set that goal, those uh, children try to reach it. And they study until they get to the end of their education, and then they go out to work. But in their work, they also set up goals as well. But do we know that all beings from the time that we were born, whether we're studying, whether we spend our time working, we're always on this world, and this world is spinning around without stop. But time also passes, and it never comes back. And so we're always 
running out of time. Some people are able to see the Dhamma from childhood, and some people, they see the Dhamma as an adult, and others, they get amused by this world for 50 or 60 years, and then only after that do they become interested in the Dhamma. In times gone by, Thailand uh, was mostly, the social structure was mostly based around agriculture, and most of the people here were farmers. People would work in the fields until they got too weak to do so, until they got quite old, maybe 50 years, 60 years. And then after that, they would leave the work to their children, and then they would go to the monastery and listen to the Dhamma. And society would also support the people in doing that as well. Because for those elderly people who weren't interested in going to the monastery, and people would say to them, well, you're old already and you're still getting all caught up in the world. Why don't you want to go to the monastery? Why don't you listen to the Dhamma? At the age of around 20, uh, men would usually ordain as a monk and then get married, have their own family and work. And then when they old, they would retire and go to the monastery. But now things are quite different, however. Back in those days, the young people wouldn't go to the monastery, just be the old people. But now things have flipped around. The people who are 50 years old, 60 years old, don't find them so much in the monasteries. And It's like they're trying to be young again. It's mostly young people who come And so this technology, especially communication technology, has changed things in many ways. People are becoming very deluded in this world, far more deluded than they were before. So the world spins around, and it takes 24 hours for it to spin an entire cycle, which makes one day. Uh, But the sense impressions that we experience in our hearts they cycle over much faster than before. And then our hearts, they go and attach to those. That when they receive these impressions, they cling on to them far faster than before. And so reaching peace becomes even more difficult than it was before. Because we have less of a foundation, less stability internally. The mind doesn't have any wisdom. It's just this delusion in the world, which means deluded, being deluded in these sense impressions. So we really need to be focused, to be engrossed in this practice, to see the danger of having a mind that's deluded, that's stirred up by all of these sense impressions. And when we close our eyes, then we see that. We think, well, why isn't this mind isn't peaceful? Why is it so agitated? And in doing this, we see the harm in attaching to all of these things. And so then we come to study, to practice, um, to seek out this path which leads us to heaven. So we should really try to walk that path, and try to walk it towards peace. But whether we do that or not, and to what degree we do it, depends upon the sincerity that we have, the effort that we have in this practice. So we need to try to cultivate a mind that is peaceful, to be interested in listening to the Dhamma and being generous in cultivating the qualities of mindfulness and collectedness until the mind, until we gain an understanding of these things, an understanding of the practice. In the beginning, we may want to know many things about it, to know what samadhi is like, what kanaka samadhi, upajara samadhi is like, we read from the scriptures um, that with Kanaka Samadhi, it's like a minor form of Samadhi. There's joy there, the heart fills up. And this can come from the merit that we do, from the virtue that we keep from a meditation practice. Maybe tears flow down our cheeks from listening to the Dhamma and our heart fills up with joy. And so this is what we call pity. So we understand this, um, that this is what pity is like, and when it increases, when it becomes more and more, then both the heart and the body feel very buoyant. And this is upajara samadhi. So if our hearts are 
well established and the here and the present moment, it's not very difficult and all of our doubts are relieved. And then we have the energy, the internal resources to contemplate into Sankara's conditioned phenomena, contemplate into physicality and mentality. Because all of the 84,000 teachings of the Buddha, they all fall into this teaching that all form, all feelings, all uh, memory, or uh, the sanya, and all mental formations, all sense consciousness, these things are inconstant, these things are stressful, and they all need to break apart. So all of the three books, or the three collections in the Tipitaka, the 84,000 teachings contained within, whether it's the, in the suttas, in the vinya, in the abhidhamma, these are all for the sake of peace, of body, speech, and mind. And when we put them into practice, then we will reach that peace. So this path, it's about really knowing in time the ignorance in our minds, the attachment, um, the craving. And this is the path of sila, samadhi, and panya to know this, to have this knowledge coming up in time. And we need to go without stopping. We need to carry on. And because we don't know how many more steps we'll be able to take within this life, we don't know whether we'll even be able to take one more step along this path. So we really need to bring up our efforts, to bring up a sense of urgency, to walk quickly. And then when we die, we don't know when we're going to have the next opportunity to take another step along this path. But at the very least, we know that while we have this life, then we can develop, we can walk along this path, this path that takes us to seeing the Dhamma. And in doing that, then we bow our hearts, or we humble our hearts, into the flow of the Dhamma. And then we see the Dhamma. Because these things that it's pointing to, old age, sickness, and death, we've all seen these before. We've all had family and friends who have got old, who have died. But we need to contemplate to realize that we are of the nature to experience these things as well, that we can't escape from them. And so really study these things until you gain a knowledge of them, contemplate them well. And for the monks, um, this is something that we contemplate every single day, that we have to be separated from everything here. All the material things, our bodies, for example, all of the things that we like and love, that we are of the nature to be separated from these things. And so we should all train our minds like this, really focus ourselves to put our efforts in. We should have this inner stability, what we call samadhi, to have right view, what we call panya. And we need to really be focused on moving uh, towards our goal to meet with success. And so we study both externally and internally within our hearts as well. And we depend upon our faith, which is something that we all have already. So we need to then depend upon our efforts as well and keep going without stop. So may all of you really put in your efforts. Um, and then whether you're lazy or not, then do it. If you're feeling lazy, then practice. If you're feeling energetic, then practice. And this is how Lung Pucha taught, to just carry on going without stopping. If you have doubts, then carry on. If you don't have any doubts, then carry on. And I really liked this teaching because I had so many doubts when I was younger, so many doubts about this practice. But may all of you be sincere in this practice. <laughs>